Welcome to Mining Over Canada. Join the Canadian Securities Exchange and our partners in a first-hand look into our country's vast mining landscape. Hi, my name is Anna Saren. I'm Director of Listings Development with the Canadian Securities Exchange. I'm here as part of our special presentation of Mining Over Canada. And this week we're exploring Quebec and Atlantic Canada. And I am joined by Mathieu Savard, who is with Explore, um, which is part of the uh, Mining Association in Quebec. So thank you so much for joining me, Mathieu. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for having us. So, so you have um, other hats that you wear, obviously, in Quebec, and we'll touch on those a little bit. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm a geologist by training. Uh, I sit on the board of uh, uh, the Quebec Mineral Expo Exploration Association since almost 10 years. I now uh, chair the board of uh, directors. Uh, and on my day job, uh, I am president of uh, Cisco Mining. That's pretty impressive. You're, you're a busy guy, obviously. Um, why don't we start a little bit and just let's talk about Explore because that's why we're here. And, and, and I will preface this with saying that uh, when we decided to put this whole platform together of Mining Over Canada, we chose to launch the event with Quebec and Atlantic Canada um, because of Explore, because um, Explore is having its annual mining conference, which starts on October 19th and runs through to the 21st. So we thought, why not start in Quebec? when people are already congregating and talking about the mining and exploration space. So, so you guys actually are the reason that, uh, that we're starting where we are. So why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, you know, Explore, as we changed the venue of Explore last year, uh, we had a new venue at the uh, Fairmount uh, uh, Reine Elizabeth, uh, and it was really successful with a strong technical program. Uh, but unfortunately, this year we had to adapt as, you know, every explorer had to adapt uh, in Canada, basically, and all the enterprise. So we went 100% virtual. So this year venue is next week. Uh, it's going to be, again, uh, really strong technical sessions. Uh, so for people who want to register, they can go on the Quebec Mineral Association website. And, and basically what the association is, uh, it was founded in 1975 to increase the mining exploration in Quebec and support the development of Quebec mining entrepreneurship. Uh, we have roughly 12, uh, 1,200 individual members uh, from prospectors, geologists, geophysicists, brokers, uh, tax expert attorneys, and we also have uh, a lot of corporate members. And uh, our objective is to promote sustainable and responsible exploration for Quebec mineral resource, but also to promote, of course, its vital contribution to uh, Quebec's economy. Uh, last year, we also launched uh, certification in sustainable development uh, along with the UL, which is now uh, called EcoLogo. So it was after many years of uh, consideration and the, uh, the consultation that we initiate that project that now uh, went to a fruition with uh, 20 company in the process right now and a few who already uh, got the certification. Uh, Expo was a place where, you know, all the mining industry gather in October uh, since quite a while, but again, this year it's 100% uh, virtual. So uh, we adapt. And uh, we hope that uh, a lot of people will register for this uh, this year event. Well, I mean, as we were just talking about it, it is such a shame. I think these mining conferences, especially in the mining space, because um, the mining is is such a global um, uh, sector. We all get together at these conferences. I mean, even Canadian geologists could be traveling all over the globe. And, uh, you know, uh, Canadian brokers and bankers raising capital quite often are raising capital outside of Canada as well. So I think we're all over the place. These conferences really become the one spot where we can all regroup. We can talk about uh, what the markets have been doing for us. We can talk about some of the exploration that has happened, some of the big wins that have happened, some of the not so big wins that have happened. Um, it really is that time of year where we all congregate. And I think it's just fostered such a great environment for us. So I think we'll all miss it this year, but I, I really do encourage people. I mean, that's why we're doing Mining Over Canada is just for that reason is that we can all get together online. Let's keep that part of, um, that's part of 
our program is what we do is let's keep connecting, even if we have to do it, you know, this way, um, you know, wearing pajama bottoms, at least this time around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I wouldn't suggest that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> You don't want to. You don't want to do that at one of the conferences. Um, so I, I, I encourage everyone who's watching this to go and check out Explore because it is available online. There's an opportunity that's happening though that might not have happened in the past. You don't have to be in Montreal this year to participate in this amazing event, and there's so much knowledge that can be gained. I mean, I just. It, it, I encourage people so strongly to go to these things and listen to the experts. You might not get all of it because some of it's probably fairly technical, but go and listen. I mean, it's the best way for us to learn, especially if you're trying to figure out your due diligence practice. So I definitely encourage people to do that. Why don't we talk a little bit about Quebec? I mean, Quebec is, it's such a big part of our mining landscape. And I think Quebec has done a really amazing job at fostering both the exploration and the mining side. So why don't you tell us kind of your thoughts on, on Quebec and the mining landscape? Well, you know, if you look uh, globally, Quebec is uh, among the, one of the best jurisdiction uh, in the world, if not the best, uh, you know, we have a strong uh, institutional support from uh, Quebec, um, we have also a uh, huge incentive, uh, tax incentive program. So for every dollar you put on the ground, you'll do, uh, you know, the extra miles. Um, we have uh, manpower expertise uh, and, uh, you know, I, I would say a predictive jurisdiction. You know, if you follow the rules, uh, if you are uh, doing everything's right, uh, regarding re uh, ex uh, social acceptability, you'll end up with new, you'll have no surprise along the course. So uh, again, for each dollar you put underground, you'll, you'll do the extra miles uh, with those uh, uh, financial incentive that the, the, the province put forward. Uh, and again, it's, uh, you know, in these uh, earth something de uh, days, I guess, uh, there's nothing like a safe jurisdiction to explore. It's already uh, a risky business to explore. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the, the Explorer Convention was, again, what a, an investor is looking at, a good project, but certainly a, a good team. And, and that was the opportunity to look at those conferences. But, you know, physically, you, you can uh, uh, talk with the, the management, uh, look at the project to, in, a, in order uh, to make an, a, an investment decision. So now this year, it's a bit different, but uh, it was the idea all along the way. Well, and you bring up a really good point there because there is there is so much speculation in investing in the in the exploration and mining sector um, that there's already so much. One way that you can deleverage that risk is, um, you know, jurisdictions that are safe, that have safe political ecosystems. Um, now, under a pandemic, I think it adds even further um, benefits to be investing in exploration and mining within our own country you know sending a team out to some other country where you don't understand their healthcare programs and you don't understand their political landscape and they're under a pandemic we don't know what could happen so i think all of a sudden it's become even that much more important to take a look at what we're doing within our own country um because some of it is quite amazing. Um, you touched on the government um, benefit, and that's something that's come up in a lot of our discussions in with uh, participants in, in Quebec. Do you mind touching on that a little bit further? Because I think it's pretty unique. Uh, globally, I think it's pretty unique. And I think it really adds value to investors. Can you chat about that a little bit further? Yeah, I guess it's, it's unique, as you mentioned. There's a, a few institutional uh, organizations, uh, namely La Caisse de Depot, uh, FTQ, uh, CIDEX, a few players uh, supported by the, the Quebec government uh, who are supportive of the mining industry. And you don't find anything else similar in other jurisdictions. Even in Canada, it, it's one of a kind. So the, uh, they are willing to uh, invest in, in, in a significant project and, and project would deserve to be invested in, uh, in order to accelerate the development of, of these projects and, and companies. And uh, moreover, on the financial side, uh, if you explore with uh, non flow through money in Quebec, uh, you get the financial incentive as a, a tax credit 
on a yearly basis, depending on where you explore on the territory. If it's further north, you'll get higher credits uh, that could go up to 38% uh, of tax credit. So it's really significant uh, when you're exploring the what we call the plan or territory, uh, you know, for an explorer, there's already a, a, a huge amount of risk. Uh, but you know, in order to achieve that, if you uh, reduce your risk by you know uh, getting uh, those type of credit, it's really significant, and you don't find that anywhere in the country. Uh, well, so I don't know if you find that um, in many places globally. To be honest, I mean, I I can't. I can't speak for sure, but I think that's fairly unique. And just to clarify, because I think that's a really interesting point you brought up. So um, you mentioned non-flow through capital injections into company has upwards of a 38% tax credit, the further north that you go. But just for our audience to understand, there are tax credits associated with what's called flow through capital. So it sounds like whether you're investing flow through or not flow through in Quebec, um, there is just a massive tax benefit, as well as, you know, the other thing is you have this backing by the government. I mean, you're, you're a shareholder alongside the government, essentially, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess there's a slight difference. When you're not using flow through, uh, the, the tax credit goes to the company, but, you know, it, it, it protects the company to, yeah. to, to, to dilute at a certain extent. So if you do the maths after, uh, probably... Uh, two year and a half, three years, you get almost uh, uh, a free year, if you like to put well, it that it, way. Yeah, and it means that your check that you write to the company, they can take, they can use it just that much, that that much better. They can they can take more benefit out of that one check than they could anywhere else. Yeah, but they, but they need they need though to uh, reinvest it in the ground, so they, it's not for uh, you know office spend, expenditure. It's it's really going going back in the ground and that measure. Uh, self uh, pay for itself because it generate discovery and through discovery, as you know, a uh, good paid job and on and on. And, and, and through that system, the tax goes, uh, goes back into the government. So it's not a, a really expensive measure, but it yeah. triggers so much activities around it that it's almost self pay by itself. Do you mind touching a little bit? We've talked about kind of the financial benefits of in investing in Quebec. Um, and and I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit, but do you mind touching a little bit on the geology in Quebec? What what makes Quebec a little more unique, let's say? I guess uh, you you host the same. Uh, we host, we have of course the ABTD belt and the James belt were the equivalent to what we found in Ontario. So uh, I would say that northern Quebec is covered by the the superior craton, which hold uh, numerous uh, volcano sedimentary belts. So same type of environment that you'll find in Ontario. Uh, you know, you have the ABCD which produce a significant amount of uh, ounces through the year. So it's a really fertile area uh, for gold and it's well known. So uh, as part of it, and of course there you have the emerging uh, minerals like uh, lithium and uh, rarer and, and all those high tech uh, metals that are uncommon uh, if you look back in 20 years uh, there's also the labrador trough and the uh, where you got those uh, monster uh, iron deposit as well and up north you got those uh, nickel belt also so a lot of uh, potential and as what we've witnessed so far is a a, a consolidation uh, i would say uh, tendency uh, across those old uh, I would say mining districts uh, where companies generate new ideas because it was uh, not consolidated. A lot of holders, which kind of stop new ideas and, and innovation. So but right now, what, this is what we're witnessing in a lot of districts in Quebec. Uh, strong consolidation uh, combined with innovation and, and new, uh, new ideas, which leads to uh, a couple of new discoveries. Well, and I think it's important for people to also understand that the price of gold, um, it affects all of this so greatly because if the price of gold is at a value um, below the cost of uh, extracting it from the ground, there's absolutely no reason to do so. So, uh, you know, the price of gold really leads to the, the furtherance of innovation and exploration and 
um, and of course mining itself, but uh, is definitely providing us with a platform, I think right now that we can we can move forward. And, and, and in such interesting times, I think that's a really good thing for, for the country as a whole. Um, so speaking of exploration, let's talk about uh, the other hat that you wear. Um, so you are president of a Cisco Mining which uh, we have to touch on a little bit because it's so neat to see such a successful exploration company um, where you're busy at work within our country. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Osisco? So Osisco is an exploration and development uh, company. Uh, we have a project called Windfall, which we own at 100%. And Windfall uh, recently reached the uh, world-class deposit uh, category, uh, both in, in terms of grade and uh, in uh, amount of ounces. In February, we did publish uh, a resource update uh, on which we have an agglomerate uh, 5.1 million ounces, grading 8.6 uh, gram, which is uh, in a new emerging district in Abitibi, uh, in the urban berry belt, which is, uh, I would say, 100 uh, 15 kilometers from a small town called uh, La Baie sur which is itself 200 kilometers east of Val d'Or. Uh, we, we were successful in uh, bringing that resource up. We did uh, do two uh, bulk sample that uh, positively reconcile, reconcile with the block model from 26% to 89%. And uh, so far, it's been the uh, most active project in Canada, certainly, but uh, even in the world for the last four years, where we reached recently 1.2 million uh, meters drilled. Uh, so it's, it's really a, a, an emerging project, and uh, we're looking forward to develop that deposit into a mine in the, the years to come. Well, I think it's a great project for people to look at and have an understanding of where things can go from some of these grassroots projects. Um, and, you know, I, I heard an interesting art or um, interview on a Cisco um, that I thought was important to touch on. And that was that you, as a technical team, um, you all looked at um, many, many, I can't remember the number, but there was a lot of projects that you that you all looked at internally at before you chose Windfall. And I think that's important for people to think about when they're making an investment. What is the technical team involved? Have they had success in the past? And did they, did they go and actually comb through what was available and really do their due diligence and pick a property for a certain reason and, and, and create a real Plan with it, so I think that's I think that's something for people to remember when they're looking at properties. Was this a just you know the property that became available and and you went forward with it, or or did you actually spend the time to really weed out the next right property for your technical team and their expertise and that they're a match? Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Windfall was on the list of a really short list of a few projects that could qualify uh, uh, and, and along uh, the different criteria we put together. Uh, it was not free. We uh, agglomerate, we consolidate uh, four companies together uh, in order to uh, recreate it to a new vehicle, which is Osisco uh, as we know it now, but it's, it was re in reality Osisco, the second version. And, and then uh, we started with a market cap of $10 million uh, roughly, and now it's uh, close to $1.3 uh, billion. So it's, it's, it's really about value creation to the you know, a really rigorous uh, process, but also with a, a tremendous team we put together. Absolutely. Well, listen, Mathieu, I can't thank you enough for your time. You you were willing to jump on this and uh, we will be launching Quebec. I hope that I hope that everyone goes and checks out Explore. Check out the people that are speaking. You really have such a caliber of experts that are participating and I hope people now, now that we don't have to be in Montreal, although it's one of my favorite cities um, in Canada, obviously, um, you know, I think it's an opportunity for us everywhere to be able to check out what's going on and hear some of the experts speak. Um, so thank you again for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, once again, I, I invite everyone to uh, attend to that uh, virtual conference. It's a uh, high caliber conference and good session. So Thanks a lot for hosting me. Thank you, Mitchell.